Donald Trump, the 45th president of the United States, has long claimed to be a self-made billionaire, a real estate mogul, and a business genius. However, it definitely wasn't him that built all that fortune on his own. And in fact, it wasn't even his father. It was Grandpa Trump, Frederick Trump, that was the first hotelier in the Trump family and whose get-rich-quick scheme put the rest of the world on a trajectory where his grandson would become president. So how did he do this? Why, by selling swan meat and pimping prostitutes in the Yukon. Donald Trump claimed to have started his business with a small loan of a million dollars from his father, Fred Trump, a successful but dubious housing developer in the Brooklyn and Queens boroughs of New York City. This, it turns out, would be a wild undervaluation. Something that the Trumps are famous for, at least on their taxes. Donald would have received over $413 million in wealth from his father over the course of the years. From various real estate holdings being signed over to his name, to him receiving a $200,000 a year salary as a two-year-old manager, and even one time his father coming in to buy $350,000 worth of poker chips from failing Atlantic City Casino before just walking out the front door with them. But to ever explain how Daddy Trump could pay Donald nearly half a billion dollars, we have to go back another 150 years. Donald Trump's grandfather was a Friedrich Trump, born in 1869 in Karlstadt, Bavaria, in southwestern Germany. This was a winemaking region. But unlike his five other siblings, Friedrich wasn't a very physically capable person, and so he wasn't going to be much help on the family vineyard. So by 14, his mother decided to send him away to do something a little more delicate, to become a barber, to make use of his more tactile hands. By 16, his newfound barber skills weren't really being put to use in Karlstadt, and like his grandson later on, he wanted to avoid being drafted into the army, so like many others, he left for the New World and sailed for New York City. Friedrich would work as a barber in New York City for six years, until 1891, when the monotony and boredom of his daily work life drove him to follow other German immigrants across the country to the growing city of Seattle, where he would there change his name to Fred Trump and he would open the Dairy Restaurant. The restaurant that was in the same location before the dairy advertised private rooms for ladies, which was 1890s talk for prostitution, and it's very likely that under new ownership, Trump didn't stop the practice. Trump floated around the Puget Sound area for a number of years, following mining communities and sometimes staking claims on land that he would then sell back to actual miners later. When a boatload of gold and newly rich miners arrived back in Seattle in 1897 from Dawson City in the Yukon Territory, Trump decided to send two miners north to stake claims on land before the newspapers would actually start a gold rush towards the Klondike. His two claims worth almost $30, he would then go on to sell for $400, making his first profit from the promises of gold in the north without ever stepping foot outside of Seattle. But Trump had other plans in mind. He wanted to mine the miner. So in 1898, he sailed north out of Seattle towards the Klondike. At the time, there were only two routes to get you to Dawson City. Either you would sail all the way up the coast of Alaska to its westernmost point before sailing upstream along the Yukon River all the way to Dawson City, or the shorter but arguably harder way was to sail to Skagway and then climb yourself up and over the Chilkoot Pass to Lake Bennett before sailing downstream on the Yukon River to Dawson City. It's believed Trump took this southern route along what was called the Dead Horse Trail. It was dubbed this because of the vile slush of animal parts on the ground from the animals that would just die of exhaustion while pulling things up the mountain, and people would just simply push them off the side. Unlike all of the other gold rushers who had to carry their own belongings up the mountain, Trump used that $400 to hire local First Nations men to carry all of his belongings up the mountain for him. They carried enough to build a small hotel all the way up the mountain to the base of what was called the Grand Staircase, the last staging point in the United States before the arduous crossing over the Chilkoot Pass into Canada. See, Canada would not let a gold rusher enter without enough supplies for one year and enough lumber to build themselves a boat. So men would spend weeks carrying things up to the bottom of the golden staircase, and then days carrying their load up to the top for Canadian authorities to check. Here, Trump and his partner, Ernest Levin, set up their first northern venture, a tent restaurant that would serve flash-frozen horse meat. 
that were from casualties of other people's attempted climbs up the mountain. Once the local men had carried all of Trump's belongings up to the tent city, by May 1898, they continued on to Bennett, the growing hub of the Klondike on the shores of Lake Bennett, which is the headwater of the Yukon River. From here, the gold rushers would build a boat that would sail them all the way downriver to Dawson City. However, not many of them actually had experience in building boats, so so many would fall apart on the river and drown everyone on board. Again, Trump had no intention of building a boat or sailing down the river. He and his partner had brought enough lumber to build themselves a small two-story hotel and restaurant, and they named it the Arctic Hotel, selling swan meat and sex to the thousands of men that were climbing their way to the Yukon. Yep, that's right. The Arctic Hotel featured a wide menu of local delicacies that included moose, goose, caribou, and cranberries. But where most of the money was made was in the alcohol and the prostitution. Upstairs, the private rooms for ladies would have a bed and a small scale to pay for what was going to happen in that bed. Prospectors at the time were extremely lucky if they ever struck gold in the Yukon, and even less likely to ever leave with their riches, most of it being spent in establishments like Trump's Arctic restaurant. In Bennett, Trump's restaurant had a reputation. At the time, a letter in the Yukon Sun stated that single men would find at the Arctic restaurant some of the best food in Bennett, but respectable women should stay away, as they are liable to hear that which would be repugnant to their feelings and uttered to by the depraved of their own sex. Trump's arrival in Bennett was well-timed too. The rush to the Klondike has already started slowing down, and there was a new train connecting Skagway to Whitehorse that was threatening to kill the Arctic's business entirely, and for that matter, the entire town of Bennett. But, being a savvy businessman, Grandpa Trump made one last big move in the Yukon. And by that, I literally mean he went and moved his restaurant less than six weeks after opening it in Bennett. Like, physically took it apart, put it on a barge, floated it down the Yukon to the new town of Whitehorse, and then built it up next to two larger, fancier competing hotels on Front Street in downtown Whitehorse. No matter, like his braggadocious grandson, Grandpa Trump would promote this hotel as the newest, neatest, and best equipped north of Vancouver, and that the hotel was here to stay. That of course was a total lie. Trump would pack up just a couple months later after the RCMP started cracking down on alcohol and prostitution in the city of Whitehorse. He sold his half of the restaurant to his partner Ernest and left back home to Germany with $30,000 in his pocket, which is equivalent to about $500,000 today. The Arctic restaurant wouldn't last long without Fred Trump. Levin lost ownership less than a year later after being arrested during an orgy and jewel heist gone wrong, and the hotel itself would burn down in the Great White Horse Fire of 1905. Now this was a Trump that knew when to call it quits. Less than a decade after he left the Yukon, its population had plummeted after all of the gold rushers had finally started to leave. Once back in Germany, he got married, but his decision to avoid the draft earlier in his life got back to him, and he was deported back to New York City. There, he would purchase a small apartment block and move his family in, he would open a small barber shop, and finally deposit his life savings of $30,000 worth almost $500,000 today. On May 29th, 1918, Fred Trump was walking with his son, Fred Trump Jr., Donald's father, when he suddenly got sick and collapsed. He died the next day. One of the victims of the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic, Donald Trump's father was only 14. Given that he was only a teenager, Fred Jr. partnered with his mother Elizabeth to form Elizabeth Trump and Son, which he would use to start building houses in the outer boroughs of New York and eventually use to build his half a billion dollar empire that he would simply gift to his son Donald. Today, the Trump Empire has little to do with its Yukon roots, and as one Parks Canada historian David Neufeld put it, it was a wild weekend party that came, and thankfully, left. And in Whitehorse, there was little to show that the Trump family legacy started there. However, the Carcross Tlingit First Nation, in partnership with Parks Canada, is working to change this, and they're hoping to attract more tourists to the region this way. They're currently rebuilding Trump's Arctic restaurant in the ghost town of Bennett, close to where the White Pass and Yukon route train brings cruise tourists every summer, to show them a little bit more about what life in the Klondike was actually like.